Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 10 champions that never lose lane. There are many ways to win lane, be it by wave prio or kill potential. Regardless of what you think winning lane may look like, let's dive right into the video. Starting us off strong, we've got Quinn. Quinn is known for her extremely powerful laning phase. Between her range, damage, and high burst, she's ranked one of the most hated champions for a lot of top lane players. Quinn's entire kit is based around kiting out her enemies and impacting the map with her ultimate. Because of her range advantage, she's easily able to bully out her enemy laner. With this health difference, Quinn can now push her lead in different ways. For starters, she can opt for a solo kill which will further set the enemy behind. With some jungle coordination, she can call for a dive and take multiple plates as well. Finally, once she actually gets a kill or forces the enemy to recall, Quinn can use her insane mobility to roam. Her ultimate grants her a ton of bonus movement speed and is a nice bit of burst damage. It's important for her to use her lead by getting her allies ahead because her scaling isn't the best. But with all that being said, we're sure that you'll win nearly every lane with Quinn on your side. We have all this talk about being a powerful laner, but sometimes it's not that easy. If you need some help cleaning up your laning phase, make sure you check us out at ProGuides.com. Being a lane bully is all about knowing when you can and can't go for trades. This becomes even more important once you start tackling concepts like wave management. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry. We've got challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 ready to help you out. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out at ProGuides.com and join the family. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and cover our next laner. Pulling us back into the video, we got none other than Scion. This hyper tank may have caught many of you by surprise. Sure, inting Scion is an incredibly popular strategy, but don't be fooled. It's not his only playstyle, nor is it him losing lane. Scion's entire identity is to be a split push hyper tank that can also help his allies by being a massive meat shield. This is best demonstrated by the fact that he gains HP for free when minions die near him. Pair this with runes like Overgrowth and you've got yourself a tank that scales incredibly well. With this in mind, it's extremely hard to truly set Sion behind and beat him in lane. He's also able to safely farm up and clear the wave thanks to his W shield and his massive AoE Q. If he ends up being ganked or dove multiple times, it doesn't really matter to him. Sion functions extremely well with low gold income and truly only needs to ramp up. So in the end, yeah, you could kind of say that he loses lane to somebody like Aatrox because he can get beat up pretty early. But because of his great scaling and natural tankiness, Aatrox will eventually be unable to deal with him and thus won't be able to lane against him. This isn't your traditional style of winning lane, so you can say that he's the real embodiment of never losing. Next up for our list, we've got Syndra. This powerful control mage has seen a ton of play in both pro and amateur play, and it's for good reason. Not only does Syndra offer high amounts of burst damage and zone control, but she also has some of the best wave priority in the game. Most mages are unable to shove waves early on, and if they do, it's often at the expense of HP and long cooldowns. Syndra, however, is able to get early lane priority and offers amazing skirmish potential. This is what made her such a popular pick since it can be difficult for the enemy jungler to look for invades with her around. Plus, if she ever gets fed, she becomes a nightmare for any carry on the enemy team. All in all, Syndra offers a ton of utility, damage, and versatility for her team. If you play her, make sure you use her wave priority and great trading patterns to your advantage. You don't pick Syndra to AFK farm the entire game. Be sure that you're shoving your wave and looking to get vision, harass the enemy, and make plays with your jungler. Moving on to our next pick, we've got Galio in the mid lane. Similar to Syndra, Galio offers a ton of wave priority thanks to his amazing wave clear. All it takes for Galio to destroy a minion wave is his EQ and basic attack. Afterwards, he's able to look for roams or can hover in the river to help out his jungler. Pair this with his amazing utility thanks to his ultimate and you've got a powerful mid laner. Not only does Galio work as a great supporting champion, but he also deals quite a bit of damage. Most Galios build multiple AP items before opting for tankier builds. This works out thanks to his innate magic resistance and his strong MR shield. With Predator, Galio can quickly sprint towards an enemy, taunt them, knock them up, and then hit them up with a Q auto and annihilate them. All in all, Galio doesn't need a ton of gold and he has great weight prio which is what kind of makes him so hard to deal with. So keep this in mind the next time you're filled mid lane and need to pick something that can never lose lane, especially if they're AP. Before we move on to our next champion, I think it's time we cover our question of the day. Today we want to ask you all, what champion do you feel like has no losing matchups? Keep in mind this can be anything and it can even be biased. Personally, I think a really good RE player never loses to anybody. She goes even in lane or just goes kind of crazy. Sure, RE players may not always win hard, but they rarely go 0 and 10. Anyway, regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comment section down below. With all that being said, let's get back into the video and dive right into our next few champions that never lose lane. Swinging his way onto our list, we've got Auction. This rogue sentinel has been an extremely popular pick in the mid lane. Sure, you can attribute this to his roaming ability and resurrection shenanigans, but that's not his true power. What really makes Uction such a good pick is a combination of two things, his trading patterns and his wave priority. With these, Uction becomes one of, if not the strongest laner in the game. His quick trades allow him to easily gain HP advantages, which dissuades the enemy jungler from ganking. 
On top of this, it also strikes fair into his laner as he can often look for a solo kill if they step in too close. Next, we have his Q which seems like a simple enough ability at first. However, people forget how strong this ability really is. Uxian's Q has the potential to hit the entire wave as well as the enemy all in one cast. Pair this with a 2 hit passive and you got a champion that can get wave priority whenever he wants it. This means that you can easily look for skirmishes with your jungler or you can opt out for a roam timer instead. However you decide to push this lead, just keep in mind that most of your power is in your lane presence. So don't set yourself so far behind that you're no longer able to be a kill threat nor maintain wave control. On to our next pick we have Ash. Ash is a marksman that is well known for her high utility and strong laning phase. It's actually the amount of lane dominance that has led to many of her nerfs throughout the years. On the outside, Ash's kit looks relatively simple. Her Q empowers her basic attacks, her W is a small spread out projectile, or I guess not that small, and her E just gives vision. When you see these abilities, you don't necessarily think of a champion that never loses lane. However, it's a combination of these abilities and her auto attack range that makes her a serious threat, especially in pro play. Thanks to her W, Ash is able to constantly shove in the wave and get lane priority. During this, she's likely to hit all the enemies with the projectiles, which will slowly give her a health advantage. If Ash ever feels like she's going to get ganked, she can simply send a hawk shot into the fog of war to spot out the enemy jungler. Finally, the enemy overcommits and doesn't kill her, she can hunt them down like no other. Between her passive, Q, and approach velocity, there's no one that can outrun Ash. Just keep in mind that Ash's biggest trade-offs are her damage in exchange for high utility, so don't be expected to be melting through enemies later on in the game. Ash wins her lane through information gathering, CC, and HP advantages. Be sure to shot call for your allies so you can go ahead and share the victory for your lead. Next on our list, we've got the Sheriff of Piltover, Caitlyn. It's best to think of Caitlyn as a far more aggressive and bursty Ash. While she may not offer the greatest utility in the game, she deals quite a bit of damage. Similar to Ash's W, Caitlyn's Q deals a large chunk of damage to the minion wave. As Kate, your goal is going to be to shove in the wave with your Q and ideally hit the enemy with it on the way. Plus, you have the longest basic attack range in the game, so be sure you use it for trades. Once Caitlyn gains an HP advantage, she is able to force the enemy under their tower. Unlike Ash who wants to play with her allies and utility, Caitlyn instead likes to punish the enemy under their own turret. With her traps, Q, and basic attacks, Caitlyn can easily check out the enemy while they're focusing on CSing. Pair this with her amazing headshot passive and you'll often see a Caitlyn player take multiple plates in every single game. Keep in mind that all of your lane pressure and presence is due to your wave control and tower taking power. Use this to your advantage and translate your lead by taking your turret and then switching lanes to break others. Now, before we continue on to the end of the video, if you want to join an amazing community of people like you that loves lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. Join up and make sure you message me, because I wouldn't mind joining you guys for some games. Anyway, let's get back into the video and take a look at our final few champions. Pulling us back into the video, we have Miss Fortune. You can think of Miss Fortune as a fusion between Ash and Caitlyn. Her laning phase is powerful thanks to her great wave control and trading power. MF is able to harass the enemy with her E and Q since they often keep their distance to avoid getting chunked. While she may not be taking turrets as easily as Caitlyn, she'll instead offer the team a significantly better team fight. As MF, it's important for you to understand that your powerful laning comes from short bursty trades and poke. If you want a traditional common MF rune page, then be sure to use your E on both the enemy and the minion wave at the same time. If you instead went for PTA, then look for small trades with your auto Q auto so you can go ahead and gain a health advantage and push your lead. Next up we have Karma who is regarded as one of the best landing supports in competitive play. If a team is looking for a bot lane wave priority, then you'll often see that they draft Karma with nearly any ADC. This is because she can transform almost any bot lane into one with permanent wave control. Between her powerful RQ combo and her great peeling tools, Karma takes control of the lane very well. If your ADC needs to push the wave, she can easily Q it to push. If they need to gain a health advantage, Karma can look to take heavy trades with her RQ and shield for any incoming damage. Finally, if you're getting ganked, she can easily disengage with her ultimate and shield by giving you both high movement speed. Overall, she's one of the best supports that can completely control the lane and give great utility. Last but certainly not least, we've got Brand. Now, Brand is far more of a solo queue pick than Karma is, but that's not the point. Similar to Karma, he offers great wave control as well as strong trades. While he may not be able to shield off his allies or provide great peel, he instead deals a ton of damage. If the enemy ever looks engaged on his ADC, Brand can nearly 1v2 thanks to his intense burst damage and ultimate. With enough gold, you can even consider him to be a carry. Just make sure that you're not too carried away with your damage. Sometimes you may end up taking excessive kills, or may accidentally clear the entire minion wave with one ability. Which, between you and me, is a total accident, right? I'm winking right now, but you can't tell. Anyway, that sums up our video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to join our Pro Guides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys back in the next video, and don't forget, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.